All right, this video is about the composition of functions. I'm going to start with an example and then do the abstract image afterwards. So let's say we have two functions f and g and we want to compose them so we have f dot g of x. This is really just the same thing as saying we're going to do f of g of x. So in other words, we're going to stick in a function g of x into a function f and evaluate it. So if we say that f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 1 and g of x is equal to 2x plus 3, we can find two compositions here. We can do f of g of x and we can do g of f of x. So in A, find f dot g of x. This is going to be the same thing as finding f of g of x. So what does this mean? It means we're going to take our function f and we're going to put in 2x plus 3 into everywhere that we have x in f of x. So what this means is that if in our original function we had f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 1. So what we're going to do in that x spot is we're going to stick in 2x plus 3. So x becomes 2x plus 3, and then we add 1. So this is going to be the same thing as the square root of 2x plus 4. Now, if we want to find g of f of x, it's very similar, but now we're doing the opposite thing. So g of f of x, what we're going to do is we're going to take our function g, and we're going to put the square root of x plus 1 into any position where x is. So if g is the function 2x plus 3, we're going to stick f, the square root of x plus 1, into every place where x was originally. So our final solution doesn't really look any different. It's 2 times the square root of x plus 1 plus 3. So this is how we compose functions. And we can think of this like a function machine. So I'm going to keep this as our example going forward into our graphical representation. So uh, let's do function machine notation first. So basically, we get an input. And we're going to do f dot g of x. This is the same thing as f of g of x. So what's going to happen is we're going to put our input into the function machine g first. So let's just say that our input is going to be x for the sake of simplicity. Now what we're going to get from g is 2x plus 3. And then we're going to take this input and we're going to stick it into the function machine for f. And we're going to put 2x plus 3 into every place that the square root of x plus 1 was. So what we're going to end up with is the square root of 2x plus 3 plus 1. So you'll notice that we're doing g before f. And this is because in terms of our nested layers, in this notation, we do have to do g first. So we get f of 2x plus 3, and then we do f after. So what compositions of functions are really allowing us to do is to take an alternative path. So instead of doing what we did above, we're really just taking this input, putting it into a function machine known as f dot g, and then our output is going to be this one right here. So in terms of non-function machine notation, it's like having three little boxes. We start with an input, we map it with G, we take that output, we map it through F, and we end up in our uh, range of F dot G. And alternatively, it's sort of like taking an input and then just taking a shortcut by doing uh, F dot G. So, the order does change in terms of which functions are applying first. So if we have f dot g, that means we're going right to left. But as long as you understand the process, it's difficult to get questions wrong in this case. So let's do an exercise. 
So we're going to start evaluating some of these functions. So if f of x is equal to 2x minus 3 and gx equals 4 minus x squared, we're going to find f of f of 2, g of g of negative 2, and g of f of x. So how, can, how do we do this? Well, what we're going to do is take the function f and we're going to first evaluate f of 2. So if f is 2x minus 3, that means we're doing 2 times 2 minus 3 because this is where our x originally was, so we're going to substitute 2 into it. So this is going to be the same thing as f of 4 minus 3, which is just f of 1. Now we know how to evaluate f of 1. This is going to be 2 times 1 minus 3, which is 2 minus 3, which gives us negative 1 as an output. Now let's do g of g of negative 2. So this is just going to be the same thing as g of g of 2. So what is g of 2? Well, g of 2, sorry, negative 2, g of negative 2 is going to be 4 minus, and then we're subtracting negative 2 squared. So this is going to be the same thing as g of 4 minus 4, because negative 2 squared is 4. So we're evaluating g of 0, and now we know how to do g of 0. This is just going to be the same thing as 4 minus 0 squared, which gives us so this is when we evaluate, but we can also just compose the function as we did before. So here's another example of what we did in our previous slides. So this is the same thing as g of f of x. So what is f of x? f of x is 2x minus 3. So whenever we see an x in our function g, we're going to replace it with 2x minus 3. It's going to be 4 minus something squared, and we're going to replace x with 2x minus 3. We can start simplifying here. So this is going to be minus, uh, we're going to get 4x squared minus 6x minus 6x. So this is minus 12x. And then negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. So if we simplify this further, we're going to get negative 4x squared plus 12x. And then 4 minus 9 is negative 5. So that would be our output. So this is composing. What might be a little bit more challenging is taking a composed function and breaking it up. So let's say we have a function f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 1, and we're told to decompose it into two functions. Basically, what this means is we need to find a function f, we need to find a function g, and then we need to make it so that f of g of x is going to be equal to the square root of x plus 1. So what I'm thinking in this case is that this root x could replace something like an x in another function. So if f is equal to x plus 1, then what I could do is I could take x plus 1 and I could replace all instances of x with the square root of x plus 1. So this would mean that my function g of x would have to be the square root of x. So what I would get in the end is f with the input of the square root of x. And then in our original function where x would be, we'd be replacing that with the square root of x and adding 1 at the end. So let me just get rid of this bit. But this seems like a fine way to do this function. h of x is a little bit trickier. We have the square root of 1 plus the square root of x. But in my head, I'm thinking of the same thing. Let's make a simple function that is the square root of 1 plus x. And then let's do another function that replaces all instances of x with the square root of x. So we can assign this in the same way with f and g. So first, what's going to happen is we're going to get f of g of x, which is going to give us f of the square root of x. And now we have, this is going to be the square root of 1 plus and then everything where x originally was in our function x. We're going to replace it with the square root of x. So this is going to work for b. Now g looks a little bit more complicated because we have some x squareds in here, and we also have a numerator and a denominator. 
but really it's not that different. So I'm noticing the same thing on the top and the bottom, x squared. So in terms of my functions, I'm thinking at some point I want to replace all of the x's with x squareds, which means I'm going to start out with an original function that is x over x plus 4. So if I label these as f and g, we're going to get f of g of x, which is going to be the same thing as f of x squared. So if I say that f is x over x plus 4, every time I have x, I'm going to be replacing it with x squared. And that's going to give us the function that we want. So usually it's about finding a simple function, targeting a variable, and determining what you're going to replace that variable with. So you can think of the g function as being the replacement, and you can think of the f function as being like the skeleton of that. Now we have one more question, which is a little bit more complicated. Given two lines, so f of x equals m1x plus b1, and g of x equals m2x plus b2, what is f of g of x? Is this going to be a line? If it is a line, what's its slope? What's happening here? So in this case, we're getting f of g of x, which is the same thing as f, where in every case of x, we're going to be replacing it with m2x plus b2. So what this is going to mean is we're going to have m1. Our x is going to be replaced with m2x plus b2. And then we're going to add b1 at the end. What we're going to get, if we multiply these out, is m1 m2x plus m1 b2 plus b1. So in this case, we still have a linear function because we have just a variable x here. So if we want to rewrite it in the form of mx plus b, what we're going to get in this new form is that we have m1 m2x plus and then m1 b2 plus b1 is going to be our b. So we could rewrite this as nx plus c, and we could say that n is equal to m1 m2, and then c is equal to m1 b2 plus b1. And this looks like a nice linear formula. So the new slope of this composition of functions is going to be m1 times m2, and our y-intercept is going to be m1 b2 plus b1. So that's it for this composition of functions video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to respond.